Hello and welcome to another episode of Android Dev 101. Today we're taking a look at map view and a special technique to quickly add elements to a map view. So this tutorial is going to assume that you've already taken a little look at map view and how it works, how a map you can extend a map activity and get access to Google Maps. You're also going to need in your XML obviously to have the API key. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about right now, take a look in the links or do a quick Google search and see how to ma make a quick map activity. And when you're done, you should get something like this. And as you see, I, I picked an arbitrary point. Um, somewhere it just zooms to that. I zoomed in here too. This is a uh, zoom 17. Um, as you see, you grab the map, uh, the the map controller, and then you can zoom. I also uh, had it animate to just a, a point, so it go to the same place every time. And here we have our map view, our streets, and everything. Okay, what we're gonna see in this tutorial is how to do quick adding of elements to the map view. Now the technique we're using here is going to allow the user to simply click on the map view and then it'll add an element and then on each element it will still have a listener so that that element can display its information. So let's say for instance we want to add something to this park right here. The user simply touch. See it adds a little red circle. Now if we click on the red circle a little pop-up will come up. Uh, this is just you know for the tutorial saying this was point zero the first point I entered and the text just says you clicked on it now if you notice if I click somewhere else it'll add another point so it can tell if I'm clicking on something that already exists or if I'm clicking in the open space and if I click in the open space it adds a point like point one here and when you click on point one it gives you the general text okay so how do we accomplish this so let's go back to our clips project um, I'm not going to really go over too much the map activity. I'm going to assume that you've already done that in a previous tutorial. I'm going to go over instead this custom class called Previous Action. Now, Previous Action extends itemized overlay with overlay items. Itemized overlay we grab in the map activity here. We grab a list of them. Map activity has a list of overlays which you grab through this function get overlays. And then we add our own custom overlay to those overlays. So we we add our own custom one. Now we have an our own layer on top of the map view. How does this layer work? First of all we have our constructor. We need to get a few certain items for the constructor. Um, one is a, a default marker. That's the red circle here. That's what's going to use for each item. Now you can customize this so each item actually has a different picture. Um, you just need to do a call to set marker on each item and that you can give it its own picture. Very very important make sure to bound your um, images, your drawables before you set them. If you do set marker without bounding it won't be able to draw it. So set bound center anytime you want to set a marker or in this case where we're calling the super to set the default marker. And we grab the activity because we're going to need that later for um, creating the pop-ups. And in the constructor we also just do um, a general um, create of our list and populate. This is very important as well. Anytime there's a change in the list, you need to run populate, otherwise the application will crash. Okay, so then we created this helper function called add overlay. In add overlay, we we receive an overlay item. Like I said, this can have a custom um, drawable for it if you want to do set marker on it. We add it to the list and we run populate. Very simple. Okay, but how do we know when to add it? So we have two of the on tap functions here if you notice. We have on tap which receives a geo point and map view and on tap which receives an index. On tap for index is when you click on an item. So for instance when I click on this red circle that was on tap index one because it's index one in our array. And then this on tap is any on tap anywhere on the screen including on the items. So we had to do a little bit of trickery here. What we did was we ran an on tap on the boolean uh, sorry, on top of the super of this function, which is for over item over itemized overlays, and we asked what boolean it returns. Okay, now I, through a little experiment, realized that default is returned false. So, for instance, if I click anywhere else besides the red circles, it's going to return false. 
and if I click on an item well I can decide whatever I want to return so I return true so through that technique I can tell if I'm clicking on an item and then if so I return true and if you see here if it's true then I don't do anything in this on tap however if it's false if I click and this on tap doesn't receive a call for instance here now on tap is false and we add an overlay at that point and give it our parameters so it's just that easy just with those some the the realization of these two functions we're able to quickly add any items we want to our map view while allowing them to still receive events so thank you for joining me in this tutorial um, the code for our previous action class is going to be on the blog as well as some links for how to start learning about map views I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope you enjoy the future ones